all carbohydrates break down to sugar. Only exception is fructose, which is metabolized directly to fat in the liver because there's no glucose yet. But to all intents and purposes, anything you eat that contains carbohydrate, metabolically it is sugar and it is toxic for that reason. Simple as that. We've got a cell that's jammed up. That means that both glucose and fat will start to pool in your bloodstream. Extra glucose pooling in your bloodstream gets metabolized to fat in the liver. Extra fat in your blood gets transmitted back to triacylglycerides in your liver as well. That goes straight to your adipose tissue, your fat cells, and you become an insulin-resistant fatty all because you're pouring carbohydrates down your neck multiple times a day. Simple as that. Now, if you're very, very active, you can get away with this. If you're young-ish, as is Dr. Paul, you can get away with this. However, it will catch up with him, and it will catch up with you if you take his advice and eat carbohydrates every day. You will be activating your Randall cycle. That will cause an insulin resistance problem sooner or later. Here is the second way of looking at the same situation. This is Randall cycle situation B, if you like. This is the one that the plant-based supporters, the, the vegans, will bang on. This is the one that they will present without presenting what I've just presented to you in terms of what carbohydrates will do to you. And they'll say, here's what happens if you eat a lot of fat, is what they say. Right, so once again, we have the blue, which is outside of the cell. We have the tan, which is inside the cell. And we have the green, which is inside the mitochondria. We have long chain fatty acids in the fluids outside the cell. They are transported into the cell on a transporter called CD36, as it turns out. Once inside the cell, a bunch of other enzymatic reactions take place and those long chain fatty acids are broken down into long chain fatty acyl coenzyme A. Long chain fatty acyl coenzyme A is transported from the cell cytosol into the mitochondria on a protein transporter called CPT1. And then through a process of beta oxidation, those long chain fatty acyl coenzyme A molecules become acetyl coenzyme A, which is that thing that drives that TCA cycle as per before. The only difference being that this acetyl coenzyme A is being derived from fat now and not so much from, uh, from glucose, from carbohydrates. If there is a lot of fat pouring through that cell because you've consumed a great deal of fat, then absolutely you're still going to have a buildup of citrate in the mitochondria because it's the same, it's the same TCA cycle. That citrate will leak out into the cell cytosol exactly as it did before, because it's the same citrate. That citrate will then be transmuted by an enzyme called ACL into acetyl coenzyme A in the cell cytosol, which is a buildup molecule in this instance, rather than a breakdown molecule. That acetyl coenzyme A is then dealt with by another enzyme called ACC, or acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase, I think, from memory. And that forms a substance called melanol coenzyme A. Now, when that happens, melanol coenzyme A directly locks out the mitochondria at CPT1, as you can see down here, meaning no more fat can enter the mitochondria. The mitochondria is fully replete with acetyl coenzyme A. Thanks very much. We don't need any more. It also will cause the long chain fatty acyl coenzyme A through a thing called FAS here to start building up triglycerides, which then get exported to the blood, transported to the adipose tissue and stored there. Melanol coenzyme A basically is the molecule that tells the cell that it's now in an energetic condition where it needs to store fat for later. So instead of burning it, we're going to build it up into triacylglyceride molecules, export those to the blood. They can go straight off to the adipose tissue. Some of it gets stored. If this is a muscle tissue, some of it will be stored in the muscle, but most of it gets exported. At the same time, because we have a lot of acetyl coenzyme A from all this fat, then our pyruvate dehydrogenase complex can't work and we can't produce a bunch of acetyl coenzyme A that way again through allosteric inhibition. Therefore, we are now unable to use sugar so much. And of course, we get a backup of sugar in that situation. And then that other situation I've just shown you comes into effect and GLUT4 gets locked out. Hello, insulin resistance. And that's what the vegans will tell you. If you eat a lot of fat, that'll cause insulin resistance without telling you that so will a lot of sugar. Both these situations are in effect at once, at the same time, at all times. So what we've got really to boil all of this down to its simplest form is that a lot of fat will lock out both fat and sugar. 
a lot of sugar will lock out both fat and sugar. Basically, what we've got is too much energy in the blood will be locked out of the cells to protect the cells from damage. Those energy substrates will then pull in this in the fluid outside the cells, the blood, and then the liver will deal with those substances largely by storing them as fat on your body and your cells will be what they call insulin resistant, whatever that situation is in effect.